one of the many formulas to the success of the mission of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam was his high level of personal discipline coupled with a sense of concession allowance and accommodation for others Sadly, we want to adopt leniency for ourselves and impose harsh verdicts on others, and Allah forbid we driving people away from the deen. I cannot and will not forget this American revert. He said, I walked into a masjid three years after my shahada, a prominent figure, and I don't want to mention his name. And as I entered into the masjid, a brother passed the remark, what kind Muslim is this with long hair like this? He said, I went back home and I'm telling you, Sheikh, from the day I became a Muslim, I was never tempted to leave Islam more on any day than that day. But the tale gets more intriguing. I debated at home, do I abandon Islam or do I hold on? Allah guided me, Allah rescued me. I shaved my hair because I was on a guilt mission. I stopped attending the masjid. Few days later, I mastered the courage to attend the masjid. Then I decided to study Islam only to discover that the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had long hair. Even if you are strict on yourself, the teachings and the temperament of Islam and the legacy of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not to be strict on others. When something is principally permissible, don't be harsh in prohibiting it. My brother, eat with your hands, eat on the floor, but someone eating with a fork and a knife, don't make him a kafir. Don't make fatwas on people. Oh man, Imam Ghazali, وَكُنْ كَالْمُؤْمِنِ يَتْلُبُ الْأَعْذَارِ وَلَا تَكُنْ كَالْمُنَافِقِ يَتْلُبُ الْعُيُوبِ Be like a believer who looks for an excuse and don't be like a munafiq who's searching for a flaw. Three days ago, I was in Turkey. One sheikh, one alim, he phoned me and he said, Oh, I've seen you here in Turkey. I would like to bring a few of my students to come and meet you. So I said, you know, I've just retired on my bed and I'm about to sleep. He says, please, man, really, I've been listening to you. Can you afford us some time? I slept my jubba on and I dashed out. I came into the lobby. My other colleagues were in their room sleeping. And I sat down and greeted them, everything. And he said, they're from Samarkand, they're from Bukhara. Please give them some nasiha. They speak Arabic. In my broken interaction, I seized the moment and I conversed with them. One of them recorded it, uploaded it. Subhanallah, everybody sends me an acknowledgement. You get a question mark from a South African scholar. But very strange, your topi was not on your head. Okay, actually, I'm in a hotel here. And this is a lobby area. And I was about to sleep. We are a toxic nation and a toxic generation and we're living in a broken society and until and unless we don't learn to account for our actions that will negatively impact others, we will remain where we are. I was probably in London, but somewhere I was giving a talk and as I'm delivering a talk, I'm observing one person in the congregation drinking with his left hand and after the talk was over, they formed a line to come and greet me only to discover that man only had a left hand. If the earth could split on me, it was that day, how I was reproaching myself. Be cognizant, be accommodating, understand the context of people. The hadith is in Bukhari, Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu narrates it. He says that Sayyidina Mu'ad radiallahu anhu used to lead us in salah. One day he came and he read a long rak'at. One person broke away from the salah and he offered a short prayer and he went away. Sayyidina Mu'ad radiallahu anhu heard about it that this man had joined and then he excused himself and he left. Mu'ad radiallahu anhu said he's a munafiq. That person radiallahu anhu heard, so he came to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ya Rasulallah, we are laborers. We work with our hands. We irrigate the farms with our camels. It's a long day for us. I came for Isha. Sayyidina Mu'ad radiallahu anhu performed a long rakat. I'm a working man. We labor with our hand. We toil till late. 
And then Mu'ad radiallahu anhu performed the lengthy rak'at, O Nabi of Allah. So I offered a brief salah. Now he's saying that I'm a munafiq. Our Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressed Sayyidina Mu'ad radiallahu anhu with utmost veneration and respect and reverence to the galaxy of Sahaba. We narrate it to the extent that it is narrated. Afattanun ante ya Mu'ad. O Mu'ad, are you making fitna? Read wa shamsi wa tuhaha. And read Sabbih Isma Rabbika Al-A'la. Then the Nabi of Allah said, When you perform in Salah yourself, perform as long as you want. But when you lead in my Ummah in congregation, please take note of the woman in that congregation, the children in that congregation, the weak one in that congregation. I'm performing Salah and I hear a child cry. Then I make my Salah short. My point is, go strict on yourself, but within the boundaries, go lenient on others. I was flying from Dubai to London. It was Ramadan. And I boarded the flight, occupied my suite. Three hours into the flight, it was uh, iftar. Anyway, I looked out of the shutter. I seen the sun tipping. I engaged in dua. The steward was an Egyptian brother. I told him that, see, I'll just have some drinks, some salads, etc. And I need to do my iftar. So he presented the meal. And then he said, Chef, brother, when you pray now and you open your fast, pray for me also. So I said, okay, I pray for you. I'm traveling and it's Ramadan. What prayer do you want me to make for you? He said, Pray that Allah gives me a better job. So I said, you working in the first cabin, many in the business and economy would be envying you. As he said that, he teared. And as I seen him cheering, I'm cheering. He said, I have a, a job that gives me a high salary. But you know, as a believer, I wasn't supposed to sell alcohol. Circumstantially, I find myself in this job. But I cry within myself daily that Allah gives me another job so I don't have to present alcohol. Go and see the, the good in the ummah. Don't condemn our youth in the universities. Then others will take them away. Go rescue our youth. It's our sons. It's our daughters. We want Muslim female to become doctors. If we're going to shun them, we will pick this ummah. Every one day is not doomed. I don't know, but my heart breaks. Where is this ummah going? Fa'ina tadhabun. Fa'ina tadha. Where is this ummah going? Where is the crisis of the Summah and where are we stuck? So the Prophet of Allah had mobilized the group of Sahaba to go out in a particular direction and they went. One person from the tribe became a Muslim and he stood one side with his belongings. He said, see, I'm a Muslim. Assalamu alaikum, I'm a Muslim. I'm from this tribe, but I have accepted Islam. Sahaba Ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhim ajma'in applied their mind and they said, no, this looks like a strategy to shield himself. And they struck at him. And then of course, they came back and they narrated the whole incident to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Allah revealed the verse. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu idha darabtum fi sabeelillahi fatabayyanu Investigate. Don't pass judgment. Wala taqulu And don't say Liman alqa ilaykum salam He's offering peace. Don't tell him lasta mu'mina. Do not say to someone who says to you he's a Muslim, you're not a Muslim. Kadhalika kuntum min qablu. You were like this before. Faman Allahu alaykum. Allah had mercy on you. This is how you were before. Remember where you were. A brother came to me, he said, isn't but the stunned meat is not good? I said, of course, it's not an ideal situation. Absolutely. I said, brother, how long are you eating pure, organic, unstunned? He said, two years. And I said, prior to that, he said, Allah forbid, I was even eating haram. I said, the ummah is where you were. The ummah is where you were. Together we hold them, together we love them, together we encourage them that they can realize the beauty, bring in extreme discipline on ourselves and within the bounds of Sharia, trying to win their confidence. Consider others to be true Muslims, fear hypocrisy for yourself. Doubt your ikhlas, trust the ikhlas of others. Then we move in, then we're going ahead. I'm saying open your arms up, bring a discipline in you. Don't judge any person. Someone said it so beautifully. Allah has concealed whose actions are accepted. So every one of us remains in a state of panic till we die. I don't know where I stand, my brother. You don't know where you stand. You completed the exams, but you don't know the result. And Allah has made the judgment on your last action. So nobody becomes arrogant in his life.
Allah said, I will decide al ibratu bil khawa. How did you die? What was your last words? Allah has made the final result on how we die. So nobody can lift his head high because I don't know where my death will find me. And you don't know where your death will find you. Allah, you grant us ease Allah. Allah, you grant unity to this ummah. 